Hey, thanks for stopping by. This is Free On Board, a podcast by Tridge. You're in the right place if you're looking to stay up to date with the latest food and agricultural news. Now, on to the updates. Welcome to Free On Board, a podcast by Trish. I'm Bia Shim, a global market analyst at Trish, and today we'll be discussing the skyrocketing wholesale prices of Mexican lime. Juan Carlos, a global market analyst and fruits and vegetables specialist located in Mexico, is joining with us today. Welcome to the podcast, Juan. Hello, thank you, Bea. Thank you for having me. Well, Juan, you wrote about how wholesale lime prices in Mexico are skyrocketing compared to last year due to supply shortages. Can you give me a brief on the situation? Yes. First, to understand this time of the year, uh, around December and January, is normally when prices in Mexico and in the U.S. as well increase a little bit because production in the U.S. is off season. They normally don't. They stop producing around November and they will start producing around March, somewhere around March and April. And that that's where the Mexican limes come in into the market stronger than the months before. This year, this is skyrocketing increase. It's due a lot of variables getting together. So first of all, just in November, when actually limes are produced for the U.S. market, the Michoacan state had a terrible frost where they reported that they lost around 49% of the harvest due on the end of November, which that was, you know, pretty damage to the harvest in general. Actually, the USDA forecasted a 6% increase on the Mexican lime production this year. This frost in Michoacan made that number actually went into around 4.5, 5%. So it actually damaged the whole uh, harvest over the year in, in limes. So that obviously created a gap in the Mexican market. And also this year, there was some other variables that affected this increase. The second one would be first the rise in the input cost, which is has affected many other crops. But in terms of limes, fertilizers has been a, an input that has affected uh, a lot of production areas. Fertilizers and packaging materials have gone around 80% of the price from last year. And also there's been a, a labor shortages in main specific areas like Colima and Michoacán and Jalisco, where a lot of labor people in the working in lime industry have gone to work in the avocado industry or some other more profitable crops. So that has led also the production cost rise about 75-80%. And the other variable that is really important and it affects both countries, the US and Mexico, is the inflation that we have been going through this year. Mexico closed last year with a 8.5% inflation. Which it's pretty high, obviously, coming from the COVID pandemic. And in the US, also, they're closed the year with a 5.5% inflation on all products, all, all the industry products. So, of course, we have to add that increase to the already increasing costs in inputs and the gap that was left for the frost in Michoacan. So if we put all those together, I mean, we have a definitely an increase of around 170% in the week five of, of this year compared to the last year, same week. So that would be the general. Yeah. So let's see. To enumerate the factors, there were one, weather factors, two, shortage of labor, three, input production costs, four, inflation that is happening globally right now. You also said that week five prices compared to last year has increased almost 170%. How long do you think these price increases will persist? The, it's expected that the prices will stabilize on around end of February, beginning of March, because there's a new harvest coming in of Persian limes, which was the one that is missing from Michoacan last year. The Colima harvest is due on the last week of February and the first week of March, and it hasn't been reported any shortages or any damages in that sense. However, that will stabilize the price for sure, but it won't go back to the same levels of last year's. You know, this increase 
affected, I would assume all through the year, it will remain above 80% year on year from last year. So it, it will affect all through the year, although with new harvest, it will stabilize as well. Other thing that we have to have in consideration is that with these shortages and these supply constraints, also another market dynamics come into play. For example, exporters, when there's a scarce that like it happened or like it's happening now uh, of limes, exporters rather put product in exporting markets such as the US or Europe because they will get more profit from that sale in the outside market. So that also doesn't help the domestic price because there's fewer limes in Mexico and also the, the wholesale price in Mexico gets pushed because the few limes that there are producers rather to export them. And the, that also hasn't helped the US wholesale price because now there's also an increase in demand in Europe for lime since last year because of the of this COVID situation and vitamin C, uh, you know, the demand of vitamin C going up. So Europe is buying more limes from Mexico right now and, pro and producers and exporters also rather export to Europe because they will have a higher profit of their crop in times where it's more expensive to produce. So that also makes the price in the US go a little bit up because there are more competition now in terms of market destinations. So that hasn't helped as well. I see. So with Tahiti or Persian limes coming in, a type that was missing from Michoacan last year, and no weather aberrations reported in Colima, Prices are set to slightly stabilize between the end of February and in the beginning of March. And so considering the factors you've mentioned, like logistical constraints and other market dynamics, like growing demands for lime in Europe, you are foreseeing lime prices in the U.S. to get more expensive. And going downstream, are there any predictions you can make with regards to how consumers in the U.S. will react to more expensive lime prices? How do you think this will affect market dynamics within the U.S.? First of all, the demand in the US as well as in Europe, it's still forecast to increase. Maybe not as the previous two years where there was a high rocket demand for this product, but it will remain increasing more in Europe than in the US. This will make the, the price maybe will stabilize after this spike increase, but not to lower levels. If there's still demand and now there's more products, producers will try to allocate that product with a higher value. So I think what we will see in the US, it's imports still growing, but maybe we're going to see more Colombian limes in the market, more Guatemalan limes in the market, and more Dominican Republic limes in the market, Peruvian as well. Those are the other four countries that supply the US and maybe can do it in a more competitive way now. I think there's a possible increase of imports from other sources than Mexico, which I think is good for the industry as a whole. You know, that dependency of on the US market for Mexican products, not just for lime, but we can see it in avocado, in strawberries, in so many other products. On the long run, is not good because once, if you rely so much in one supplier and vice versa, if you are a producer and you rely too much in one customer, this is why the prices skyrocket so much, you know, because they are really reliable in Mexican production. And when this production is scarce and it suffers from costs as well and labor shortages, well, obviously the price gets really, you know, it gets really reflected. But the good thing is that lime nowadays is producing so many other countries. Colombia is being increasing its production by double digits, Guatemala as well, in Central America, Costa Rica, Peru. So I think these countries are going to start having a more significant role in the US market. For the European market, that's harder to say because the European market, the trend there is that we are going to see more non-origin uh, Europe limes coming in. So the lime exporters in Europe will export less. And then we will see more imports into the UK, into Netherlands, into Spain from countries like Morocco, like Egypt, like like Mexico, probably like Peru. So I, I could say that in Europe, the general trend would be that the definite non-European origins will, will increase. I see so with lime prices rising as a more competitive product and one that is worth producing, more lime producing countries will try to supply to the U.S. You're saying that this could be a great opportunity for countries like Colombia, Guatemala, Peru to expand their export shares in the U.S. market and in turn for the U.S. to diversify their product origins and keep prices from skyrocketing the way it is right now. Definitely. It, that's what it means. We also have to have in consideration that there's a container freight crisis, right? So 
that's not helpful for other countries that are far from the US. You know, Mexico has the advantage that it's very close and it has a tariff preferences. So that's why it's so strong in the US market. But if other countries, other suppliers are able to offer limes in good price at a good moment when it's needed in the US, they are not such affected by increasing prices on freight. They have a really good chance to get more market share in the US. Yeah. Mm, I see. So although Mexico has a competitive advantage considering how geographically close the country is to the U.S. and hence being relatively unaffected by the freight crisis, once the freight crisis alleviates, other line producing South American countries will find the chance to obtain more market share within the U.S. We're now nearing the end of our time together, Juan. Is there anything you would like to add? Well, in, in general, I think that global uh, lime trend goes that way. I think prices are going to still remain increased by the uh, if you compare it with previous years. The price around March or April, it will won't be like it, it is now. It won't be three fifty or four dollars per kilo, which is it is crazy. I mean, we've never seen those prices in lime before, so it will go down but it will not go down to the other level. So for sure, we will maintain a higher price in lime other if you compare to other years. Just this fact can make a crucial changes in the market situations in the main countries, in Europe, in Germany, in the Netherlands, in Spain, and also in the US and Canada. They will turn to other suppliers for cheaper or better uh, all year round production. Yeah. That's awesome. Definitely looking forward to slightly better line prices and from a diverse range of countries too. Definitely. Yeah. Thank you so much for your analysis today, Juan. Thank you very much, Ba. It was a pleasure. If you enjoyed this episode, please leave a review, subscribe and share our podcast. Check out church.com slash intelligence data for more price analyses and up-to-date insights into the food and agricultural industry.